everybody. Nasty weather outside. We had such a nice snow already and now it's gonna go all rain and we'll have this brownish December that is typically at least if we get some sun that would not be as bad. But we're here to talk about what happened on the weekend. First off, uh, one thing that happened on the weekend that I actually did not pay too much attention to uh, was the draw for the European qualifiers for Euro 2020. Uh, and I probably will do uh, I will do a separate video tonight on that uh, kind of uh, looking at the groups and uh, kind of judging how they might go. At this moment, I have skimmed over all the groups but uh, the only group I can tell you is the Austria group uh, which I think is pretty even but I think I might use this opportunity also to not only um, oh maybe that's a separate video but maybe those two videos are worth it to kind of show uh, if the if the groups are going as I expect them to go what would be the playoffs uh, coming from the Nations League because I think that is a very interesting feature that we definitely should look into uh, because in the end that's where the spots will go and uh, maybe we can actually get a final field for uh, Euro 2020 already this way of course it's all a projection and I am would be surprised if I get a lot of them correct and by a lot I mean 20 or more probably yeah we'll see we'll see okay uh, it was a very interesting weekend, many big games and honestly I didn't see much on Saturday, uh, I was just too busy with it a lot at home again. Uh, we really, really, really would like to get some stuff going at home to make the home finally a real home and have a nice hobby room where we can also, you know, better have a dedicated place to make the videos and also enable my wife to have a space for her things. That's where we're slowly getting it. So uh, I had actually two games earmarked for Saturday, which were uh, Fiorentina Juve and Real Valencia. I barely watched any of these. Um, and, and Sunday I knew I want to watch Milan. I wanted to watch the two derbies in England and uh, Roma Inter. And if there's anything interesting from Spain, I would have thrown it in. Um, Except for Roma Inter, more on that later, I watched pretty much all the important stuff. But uh, to make this roundup for the weekend, I want to start actually um, today in it uh, now in Italy and then we'll uh, go further. In Italy, as I said, the first game that I wanted to watch but didn't get was Fiorentina at home to Juve. Um, you know, with some trepidation. I know that Fiorentina is actually a very entertaining side to watch, but they're not. Uh, that uh, good at the moment in the standings. I think they're a mid-table team. Uh, I'm a little bit sad about that because they. every time I watch Fiorentina, I feel they have a very talented squad. They just squander chance after chance after chance. But it's a lot of fun actually to watch Fiorentina. And yeah, of course it helps that I've been to Florence last year. Uh, kind of gave me a boost in my in me watching Fiorentina, but honestly, I always have been Fiorentina was one of those teams that I always liked. The game, yeah, 3-0 uh, win to Juve, what's more to say? Uh, I think Fiorentina had early chances, but it was all Juve. I, I, I know there was one controversial scene that I don't remember, but I think uh, well, whether it was a uh, penalty or something like that, but you know, after that, you were already had 1 0 up uh, Betancourt and then 2 0 up um, At that point, they were cruising. I listened to the Serie Awesome podcast, um, which uh, is kind of in, 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 in the main guy in there for me is Gabriele Margotti, who has written a wonderful uh, book with uh, Gianluca Viarli, the Italian job. A uh, book I can highly re recommend, it's more than 10 years old. It was a really good book. Um, uh, they were discussing yeah, the Fiorentina Juve. This is this uh, big rivalry, but it's very one-sided because Juve is, uh, yeah, you know, you know, there's all the hatred and bile coming from Fiorentina, and Juve is kind of, you know, 
if you want to have have a good house have uh, as we are, we are looking elsewhere so basically that sets you a top 40 points Napoli is playing tonight uh, at Atalanta that I think is a trap game for Napoli um, of course the big game that I have for me was Milan Parma and again you know I have sympathy for a lot of Italian clubs uh, Parma amongst them and if you've seen my top 10 video there's a Parma shirt really really high up there but to be uh, as soon as they play Milan uh, all the sympathies go out I want Milan to win and yeah it seemed to be like a crucial game Milan can do if Milan gets it together uh, they can do a lot of damage in the next few rounds. Uh, they have all winnable games. I think the next one is Torino at home. Not that easy as well. I mean, Parma uh, was doing well, but you know, uh, there are many games, Bologna, that's where I think they can make a lot of points and put them in a really good position. Uh, they played all the big boys already and they only lost to the three teams, uh, three, now three teams that are ahead of them and uh, tied with Lazio. So, I'm cautiously, cautiously optimistic. Yes, I would have liked to see them beat Inter or get the draw and so on, but cautiously optimistic. So, uh, the game, you know, it, the first half was a lot of dominance from Milan, despite, again, uh, their injuries in defense. Uh, it's staggering. It was also the last game without Higuain. Uh, he will be sorely needed. Um, Milan was dominating but not having that big chances and then uh, Parma had actually the one big chance, really big chance, a great header. Uh, I think that that went wide. That was, uh, that was the best chance in the first half but you know it was Milan in control, Parma threatening and right after halftime uh, <laughs> there was, it, it happened. A corner kick that was horribly defended. Uh, Inglese um, got away from Kessie, so he, he became uh, Bakayoko's uh, responsibility, and yeah, uh, Bakayoko didn't realize that Inglese is standing at the near post and heads it in uh, from a short distance. That would have been a blow in two regards, A, in the game. Uh, it was kind of the last thing that I thought Milan needed. They again conceded a goal. I think they had only one. No, they had two. One or two games where they won two nil. So uh, that's my biggest concern about Milan. But you know, with all the injuries in defense, uh, yeah, whatever. But also at that point, Parma would have, would have overtaken Milan. Uh, um, Milan had coming into this game 22 points. Parma had 20. Uh, so win by Parma and they would have flip flop the spot. Uh, which I think would have meant that Milan needs to do a lot more work than they would be comfortable with in um, achieving their the fourth spot that they so much crave. Uh, I think that, uh, this season uh, for Milan it's all about uh, getting the fourth place. But they answered quickly uh, and quite well so, uh, had a chance and then Cotrone made a wonderful, wonderful move. Uh, it came back in the box and he had it on his foot and volleyed it in. They of course had to review uh, the goal because Jalanoki was offside but a little bit off the keeper. Uh, took a whole lot, 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 lot of time. The referee, <laughs> yeah. The he seemed a little bit uh, not having much control of the game, unfortunately for him it was a very well tempered game. But yeah, so it was in the 55th, 4th or 9th, 55th, it was 1-1 one, one, and then, um, you know, Milan tried to get something going. It was not easy and then suddenly out of nowhere there was another video review. And it was really a situation that not even Milan players saw. Uh, where the cross came in and the Parma defender with both hands like a volleyball move handled the ball in the box away from uh, everyone and rightfully it was a penalty um, and Cassius loaded it home I was actually wondering I mean 
nothing against Cassie, but uh, is the Ricardo the Rodriguez the health taker for Switzerland? And he's never in the picture. That I found very curious. So it was 2 1, and then uh, the big one, Milan could not pull it away. They were ahead 3 to 2, 4 and 3 situations where uh, just the last pass very often was very sloppily played or it was overplayed. I think there were many chances to make it 3 1. Unfortunately, they didn't do that, and Parma had a big chance to equalize that Donnarumma saved. But they ended 2 1 for Milan. Vital win, and also putting a little bit of pressure on Lazio, and Lazio succumbed to the pressure because they only played 1 1 in Kiewa with Kiewa uh, up 1 0, uh, thanks to Felicier, and Lazio. Uh, only managing equalizer. I didn't see much of the game. I just saw just before the one nil, uh, before the one one, I saw some and the Lazio had huge chances there. Uh, but yeah, stayed one one, and Milan is in fourth spot back again. They should have gotten it already last week, but now, thank you Lazio. Uh, and then the big game in the evening was uh, Roma Inter. I have not seen a thing of that game. I saw them in a tunnel and then I said, I, I'm too tired, I need to go to bed. And yeah, Inter took twice the lead, were well, one up at half time, Roma twice equalized. That's how much I know. And I didn't see any highlights. I saw that uh, Inter, for some reason, was playing in uh, uh, their grey third jerseys. I think Roma Inter, Inter should play in like a blue. Yeah, they're not so So we have now first you uh, for. 14, Napoli is still 29, together with Inter 29, Milan 25, Lazio 24. Uh, Torino uh, had a 2 1 win against Genoa, and now they are in 6th place uh, with 20, 21 points, and there are 3, points with, uh, three teams with 20 points, which is in that order Roma, Sassuolo, and Parma. So, yeah. Scudetto to Juve, everything else kind of tightish. I, I would say Napoli and Inter will make, I will uh, probably for second place and maybe if there's some hope Milan will get fourth spot. I fear a little bit Roma, but not. I think Milan has at the moment the edge and really this stretch in December, they can sit very well. Enough of Serie A, let's go uh, Premier League. Um, it was a great game on Saturday that I, I had no intention of watching. I just saw the result, which was uh, United at Southampton. Where Southampton had a 2-0 uh, lead very uh, soon, but uh, United managed to equalize right before halftime was 2-2. Uh, I should have watched the highlights. Uh, the biggest result uh, for setting up Sunday was surely the Manchester City beat Bournemouth relatively easy at home, 3-1, and then it was Derby Day in England, uh, and the big Derby was for me the North London Derby, although the Liverpool Derby is also not to be near, but I have the feeling that the North London Derby has a, a little bit more edge to it, and it proved to be an absolutely amazing game. The uh, incredible thing is that Tottenham hasn't won at Arsenal in four ages. And again, I thought that Tottenham this time around has a slight edge, although you gotta say Arsenal played the reserve team and Tottenham needed to go full on against Inter. And they are, yeah, they had beaten Chelsea, uh, which was probably also a tough game. Speaking of Chelsea, Chelsea just before that game had the other, the South London derby, or South West London derby, between, uh, between Chelsea and Fulham. Where uh, Chelsea ended up easy 2 0 wins. It's actually uh, funny that the stadium of Chelsea is nominally in Fulham and Fulham is somewhere else, but those are little things. Uh, I noted that when I was in the early 2000s in England, that actually uh, the Stamford Bridge is not in Chelsea. I think it was in Fulham, but yeah, I might be wrong here. Lo London is an interesting city, but it's also a little bit confusing because it's actually a city of cities. Um, 
that kind of makes an interesting mix. In uh, London, except for the CSC, CSC Center, always seems like a village that gets way too big. That, that, that's how much I get. That's not always that simple. So yeah, uh, with that, uh, um, Chelsea overtook uh, Spurs again, and now it was game on. Uh, Arsenal took the game to Chelsea and got an early lead and probably should have gotten more. They really were super, super, super dominant. Uh, it was only mid, uh, it was a penalty that Vertonghen, I honestly have to say, I didn't see that Vertonghen made the connected with the hand to the ball. Yes, the hand was up and it went up, uh, but it was not very clear to me whether uh, he really connected. Um, but he didn't protest too much, so yeah. It was kind of, to me, strange. And, you know, Vertonghen the whole time had a face of resignation. After that, had a face of resignation. Gotta say. So Arsenal won the lot back, uh, through Obama Young. My daughters, especially, and my wife, especially like this haircut with the stars on one side. And then, yeah, uh, Asa should have made. I mean, if Obi had one chance, that uh, he should have been told nil, and there were others. Uh, and then Tottenham gets a free kick on the side that Eric Dyer puts in the net. And. At that moment, you saw every, every, everything erupt. He actually um, tried to silence the crowd, and then it was not quite clear. Lichtsteiner came um, to kind of say, you know, it wasn't really necessary, and uh, from that a big melee erupted, almost a bench-clearing brawl, where uh, Pochettino had to come out. So yeah, 1-1, one, one. and shortly thereafter, another very questionable penalty call. Um, again, I'm not sure. Yes, he made count, but it didn't really seem like a penalty foul to me. Game to Tottenham and Harry Kane makes it 2-1, and that was the score at halftime. And uh, it was within a few minutes, Tottenham turned the game around that they had no business of being in the lead. Yeah, they had no business because Arsenal then completely uh, took over the second half. There was not much coming for Tottenham. Obama Young, uh, great shot, made it 2 2. Um, then, yeah, I forget the name now. The guy who scored his first. No, 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 it's not that one. Um, number 9, Lacassette made it 3 2. A shot that was deflected. It didn't seem to me like it would go into net. Uh, but since it got deflected, it kind of <laughs> slowly moved into the net. And then 4-2 uh, by, uh, yeah, I also don't know the player now, but someone who uh, for the first time scored for Arsenal. So yeah, that was that game uh, ended 4-2 to Arsenal. Very well deserved Arsenal 6 9 four spot. Tottenham uh, dropped to fifth, Chelsea in third. And then, uh, thanks to City winning, Liverpool was under a lot of pressure against Everton, who also have a pretty good season. Gotta be said. And the game I did, I only saw the last um, 20 30 minutes, so, but that was um, enough. I mean, I saw that Everton had a huge chance to make it 1 0 in the first half. Uh, Liverpool, of course, had more of the game overall, uh, but it was a very tight and tense affair. And I think uh, Everton was well in the game. And yeah, Liverpool was threat threatening. There was a, a, a post hit in the 87. You know, it was almost desperation time. I and I found it interesting that Klopp took off Salah, he took off Firmino, he took off Shakiri, uh, and brought on different players. That to me was um, odd, but in the end, I think he did the right things. Liverpool won it on the craziest goal of the season. Uh, the, um, Allison lobbed it forward into the box from there. Uh, it got out, and some of I wanted to take it fully. It's more like skyrockets, but it comes down close to the bar. I think it would have hit the top of the bar and got out. But Pickford 
makes contact with the ball and it still tries to get out but it hits the bar, comes back and right at Origi who just has to net it, net, net at home uh, together with Pickford. An absolutely crazy goal. This was a desperation. This was a Hail Mary that somehow uh, got in the net. So Liverpool wins it. I mean, huge elation, of course, uh, from Klopp and all the Liverpool players. You had to feel sorry for Pickford because I'm convinced, I'm convinced this ball would not have gone in. He pulled it in back in play. And so Liverpool wins it 1-0 and stay in touch with Manchester City. Otherwise, they would have uh, had a four-point differential and I think that would have been basically it. Now they're still two points behind. I really, really, really hope that Liverpool gets the championship. I just see City being the better team. Quick, the other three big leagues. I wanted to watch Real Madrid Valencia. Didn't see it. Was a two, relatively easy 2-0 victory for Real Madrid. Barcelona uh, won. I saw a little bit of that. I saw the second goal. Uh, Piqué made the first. It was 2-0 against Villarreal. Uh, the big game in the evening was of course Alaves at home to Sevilla, which ended 1-1 and also Atletico only managed a 1-1 against uh, Girona, where Girona had a 1-0 lead and probably uh, Diego Costa again would have deserved to get off, but he didn't. So uh, in La Liga, Barca is now ahead of Sevilla again with 28 points, 28-27 Sevilla, Atletico only 25, uh, they will feel a little bit sorry of losing those points. Alaves has now 24. Real Madrid jumps up, uh, overtakes Espanyol, who are having a horrible, horrible run at the moment. They lost 3 0 to Getafe. Uh, so Real is 23, Espanyol 21, and Girona 21. Uh, that's the top of the table. Still very open. Um, the one thing I want to say is that Real Madrid is not out of it, and that could come back to bite. The leaders, but although I think Real Madrid is not yet, is not the team. I think it is still Barcelona to lose. Atletico could do something, and yeah, who knows what Sevilla will do. I was surprised. Betis is having actually. I always, always think Betis has, has a good season, but they are really far now. Uh, in France, the only notable thing is that PSG uh, lost points for the first time to to at Bordeaux, taking the lead twice. Um, and Bordeaux equalizing, um, yeah, Neymar got out injured and uh, uh, Big Clash Leon Lille ended 1-1, uh, no, also 2-2, also 2-2, sorry, and uh, Montpellier beating Monaco 2-1, so Montpellier is now in second place, it's PSG, 43, and then it's actually kind of tight and interesting. We have Montpellier at 29, Lyon at 28, Lille at 27. Those are the ones that we play in Europe at the moment. Marseille 26, Saint-Etienne at 26, are still in contention. And in Germany, uh, Bayern back to winning ways with a 2-1 victory in Bremen. And the other uh, result of note, I would say, is that um, uh, Frankfurt lost at home to Wolfsburg. There was a top of the table clash between Gladbach and Leipzig. The Leipzig won 2-0 um, and Dortmund beat Freiburg 2-0. So we have the Dortmund sits on top of the table with 33, having actually quite some distance already thanks to Gladbach losing, which is 26. Leipzig uh, jumps Frankfurt 25, Bayern 24. Those are the ones in the Champions League. Frankfurt uh, is now only fifth with 23 points and uh, behind that is Hoffenheim and Hertha. Hertha won winning at uh, Hannover, Hoffenheim I won one draw to Schalke. Well, that's how where the leagues are. Uh, again, a lot of Serie A, a lot of Prem. The other three didn't watch too much. It was a big derby day in England and I think this is uh, where the highlights are. Uh, we have uh, midweek games in the leagues. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna watch, but maybe a few I will get to. Um, Mostly Serie A, I, 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 I would think, although there's Arsenal, Manchester United, that could be interesting. And yeah, I will do a video on the draw of the um, European qualifiers, because I think it will be interesting to look at those and give you my assessment of the groups. Uh, but I probably will prepare a little bit here as well, 
to see where I think those groups will go and maybe what this means for the playoffs and how I think that the groups are. Let me know which games you watch, whether you agree with my assessments of the games that I watched uh, or, you know, let me know what what you think. Um, yeah, last played only 3-3 three, three at home to Hartberg, which was a hard... Uh, yeah, 3-3, three, three, take, take the lead twice, completely dom dominating her, Hartberg making three chance, three goals out of three chances. Um, yeah, we're still in second place, but yeah, I would have hoped for more. And yeah, give me a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.